Do you think that this stuff actually happened? Yeah, I mean, I think it happened. I think the question is, is, is what line did the Astros cross? What was the exact... Um, what was the exact rule you broke, right? So, so I know that all 30 teams try to steal signs using, you know, hand signals from second base, uh, using things from, from different. Sorry, my son keeps trying to call me, and it comes through my computer. Sorry, Hope everything's guys. okay. Oh yeah, all good, all good. Um, everyone tries to do this, right, guys? Everyone tries to get a, get an advantage, get a leg up here. The problem is is when Major League Baseball came out two years ago, against the Yankees and Red Sox, by the way, for using you know, watches in the dugout and, and certain types of technology, they drew a line and said, guys, you cannot cross this line. You cannot use certain types of, of technology and, and sign stealing and signaling to players on the field. We're going to put a stop to this. If the Astros crossed that line and they knew that they were crossing that line, there should be serious, serious uh, um, ramifications ramifications, and penalties for the Astros. And what are those? Because we've spent three days trying to think, well, you know, we had Buck Showalter on. He said, whatever penalty, you have to affect them in 2020. You have to affect their ability to win games. What would be proper if they actually had a camera in center field and a video monitor in the runway? Well, first of all, I think you have to understand that there's players that'll do anything to win and coaches that'll do anything to win. And there's executives that knew it was happening, right? right? If there are any executives or any coaches that are supposed to be the adults in the room, if any of those guys knew that this was happening, they should be suspended for a year or even fired. I, I, I think that players, I'm not, I'm not taking this off the players, but when a team source, especially someone that has control over your salary or your arbitration or a free agent contract when he comes down and says we need to do this as a player you're going to kind of fall in line so it's a little bit like uh, sean payton in bounty gate sean payton got hammered for that suspended for a year lost a bunch of money the players that that kind of did what they were told didn't get as much of a suspension so i don't think that players should necessarily be disciplined here, but I think you, you should be looking at year-plus suspensions for any employee or coach that knew this was going on. Would you even think about vacating the title? No, no, not at all. Because, you know, I told Buster only this a couple days ago on his podcast. Every team is trying to do this. Certain teams are actually breaking the rules. Other teams are right on that line. And, and it's very similar to what people talk about with steroids. You know, oh, well, you know, so-and-so got busted for steroids, and, and you knew he was taking them the year that that team won a World Series, so take away the World Series. That's preposterous because every team over the last 20 years has had a player that took steroids on their World Series team. Every team over the last 20 years had players that were stealing signs and relaying signs. The issue is, again, the issue is, is did they go so far over the line that, that you have to make some, you know, you know, a, a, a serious case here to you know take people's jobs away from them, uh, take salaries away. You know, suspend. There could be a huge fine for the Astros as a team. There could be draft picks taken away, and I think those things will happen. You know, I think the 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 real line of demarcation and where it's going to get really interesting because there there are stories out there, Mark, that the the masterminds of the system were Alex Cora. And Carlos Beltran. Now, Alex Cora was the bench coach at the time. Beltran was a veteran player. He's now the manager of the Mets. Will they come down on those guys? Because, again, he was a player. But I, I understand what you're saying. You know, if, if you tell players these are the signs and they want to win, they're probably just going to fall in line. But if you were one of the masterminds as a player, what's, what's the right penalty then? Yeah, this is tough. I, I'm so glad that I'm not working for Major League Baseball right now and trying to figure out how to divvy these fines and suspensions because it's going to get ugly. The one thing I would say is that I never liked it. I never liked trying to steal signs, trying to, you know, we had coaches that would spend all day long looking at the signs from a catcher and trying to pick up tendencies or trying to pick up, hey, you know, um, you know, this guy is going to change it, and if he changes it, this, is, this will be the sign. And I basically told the, those coaches, you know, thank you, but why don't we just see the ball and hit the ball? Why, why don't we go back to, you know, b playing baseball and n worried about getting, 
you know, hits with runners scoring position or, or not getting picked off because that's what happens is you see the, the numbers with runners in scoring position go straight down the tubes because players are looking out to second base going, oh, well, does he have it? Does he have the signs? Wait, did he say that was an off-speed pitch or did he say that was a fastball? And guys are in their heads, and then they stink with runners in scoring position. Same thing happens at second base. Guys are getting picked off because they're not paying attention to the pitcher. They're paying attention to the catcher signs, and it makes for sloppy baseball. So first of all, I never liked it. That being said, I think you have a certain group of players that, like Carlos Baltran and Alex Cora, that have been doing this their entire lives, and it's part of, it's kind of part of the fun. They love it. They think that it's, hey, man, this is me getting an extra leg up, and this is my competitive advantage. So it's been kind of ingrained in their DNA to do this, and they don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I think, the, again, the question is, is how is technology used? And if Beltron and Cora weren't using any extra technology, there's nothing wrong. If they then took what they learned from those – from studying pitchers and studying catchers and then said, hey, this is how we can relay the signs using technology and trash cans and whatever it might be, that's the problem. And so what do you do to Beltron? He's not even on the Astros anymore. He's the manager of the Mets. Well, it's going to be very difficult to prove that Carlos Beltran personally was, a, um, was using technology in the wrong way, right? I, again, stealing signs in and of itself has been part of baseball forever. The executive or the coach or somebody with a with a Astros job decided I'm going to be the one to use the technology, whether it's an earpiece, whether it's an iPad, whether it's a phone, something, and relay these signs, and this is how we're going to do it. That's the person that's going to go down or group of people that are going to go down. It's amazing to me, Mark, how paranoid people are about signs because I remember the incident in the Subway Series. You're at second base. Hansel Robles almost <laughs> blew a gasket because he thought that you, you – and to me, if you pick up signs on the field, that is gamesmanship. That is not cheating. And he was freaking out. You remember it. Yeah, and by the way, uh, uh, for the hundredth time, I wasn't stealing signs. I wasn't very good at it. I just I, – I never wanted to give – uh, my teammates something that I wasn't 100% sure of. And again, as soon as a team thinks you have their signs, they're going to change it. So I just didn't want to spend my entire baseball, the entire game, worrying about signs. It was hard, it's hard to get a hit. It's hard to field a tough ground ball, turn a double play. That's what I wanted to focus on. So there are some people out there that think that games are won lost by stealing signs. They're not. The reason the Astros won the 2017 World Series is because they were better than everybody. The reason that they got to the World Series this year in 2019, they had the best roster. Now, if next year the Miami Marlins all of a sudden win a World Series and we hear of sign stealing, then I'll be, but be convinced that, oh, man, that stuff really does work. But, they're, but the they're, fact is, they're, they're talent split, wins, they're, they're, not sign stealing. I, I get you, but their, their splits are, are somewhat stark. For some of the players, home and away, and, and it's supposed to be doing at home. And last year they were 60 and 21 at home, and although they lost the four games in the World Series, so I guess everything is muddled. And as you said, I don't want to be Rob Manford because he's got a lot on his plate here. Very difficult. And, and Michael, you do bring up a good point. And I can't listen. The numbers, the numbers, the stats are the stats. But I was at every single World Series game. The Astros stunk offensively at home in the World Series. Yep. Stunk. They, they look, it almost looked like they were that team that was searching for the signs and couldn't get them. And so in their head, they didn't have that crutch. They didn't have that thing that, that they'd been using all year. So whatever happened in the World Series, you know, signs or not, the, the Astros yeah. stunk offensively. So, again, this to me is not the Astros got a competitive advantage, and this is the reason that they've been so good the last three years. To me, it's... You were a good team that had an edge, and you took it too far. And that's the issue, is that they took it too far. It's almost like Barry Bonds taking PDs. He was great before it. Why do it? it it's, it's, it's very similar. Uh, again, I don't think that any player um, during the steroid era, before things were, before there was testing, there was a lot of players that did steroids that said, hey, there's no testing, no big deal. Until 20. It was either 2017 or 2018 when the, when the Red Sox and Yankees both got cited for using watches in the dugout. Most teams were kind of like, hey, man, anything goes. Whatever we have to do in, in getting signs and relaying, we're going to do it. 
But once Major League Baseball came in, much like they did during the steroid era, and said, no more, these are the penalties, anybody that breaks the rules after that point needs to go down. Yeah, and we'll see. And I think the players have to be disciplined in some way, too. I get what you're saying. They're kind of just fall, falling in line. I just wonder, will the Players Association allow it? And what pressure would you put on the Players Association, if you were still playing, Mark, to say, hey, listen, there could have been signing bonuses lost. There could have been players cut because I got hammered in Houston and I got sent down because I couldn't get anybody out because they knew what pitches I was going to throw. Will the players support a suspension to uh, a player that's on the Astros right now? Yeah, that, that's tough. That's very tough, Don, because very similar to the steroid era in, in 2004, I, you know, as a young player, as my second year in the big leagues, I got put on the executive committee and said, you know, basically my teammates in Texas said, hey, you're, you're, on, the, you're on the union board now. Go ahead. Go have fun. <laughs> and in one of the first meetings, when we were trying to figure out what to do about, about steroid suspensions, I was one of the guys that raised my hand and said, 10 games? Are you kidding me? This is, this is a joke. And I said they need to, need to be suspended for a year, and I got laughed out of the room. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's almost like until enough players speak up or enough media speaks up or there's a congressional investigation, the Major League Baseball Players Union is not in the business of disciplining their own guys. That's just the way it is. So the union will ste step in if players get... Uh, get suspended or get paychecks taken away. I don't think that's going to happen because I think this goes above the players onto the, the coaching staff and the front office.